Okay. Here, hey, everybody. Um, today's episode is about a question that we get all the time from folks in this amazing community um, and, and folks who are new to the community. Many folks, this is their first question that they have when they interact with us is, can my immigrant parents invest? This is a really big topic and it's something that's not being talked about enough. So I wanted to bring attention to this topic in this episode and primarily just, you know, if you're going through this and have this question, help you feel validated that this is something that a lot of people are wondering and asking about and it's, it's not just you. Um, so actually many people in our community are really concerned about how their parents are not investing and how they have no retirement plan. And it makes sense that they're concerned about this, right? Because what that often means is that you will be their retirement plan. So in our signature program, Immigrant Finance School, for example, almost every one of the students we have had um, has told me that they are basically the retirement plan for their parents. And it's often something very unspoken. It's often something that there's no conversation about, but the math all leads to that when they see that their parents, you know, haven't had access to financial education and financial planning and that their parents, you know, unfortunately don't have a lot of savings or maybe they have some savings in cash or in a bank, but they haven't been investing that money. So there is no plan for retirement essentially. Because let's be honest, in the US, it's very, very expensive to retire here or just to be living in the US without working. So as people get older and go into retirement, if there's no retirement plan that's been in place that, that has been um, you know, being worked up for many decades, that often means it's gonna be a struggle in retirement. And so in this community where so many of you I talk to know that your parents don't have their retirement plan and were never informed about investing or taught about investing. Again, that often means that the plan falls on the children. And this is a general problem in the US too. Um, there's a term I've heard used, pe people call it sometimes being part of the sandwich generation because um, think of it like a sandwich on one end, you know, folks have to, take care of their children and their immediate nuclear fam family in terms of finances, but then often have to support also parents who are aging and having difficulties and may need to help them financially. So this term sandwich generation is used to kind of show how people are being pulled in both directions, have to be able to take care of themselves, take care of the next generation, their children, and also the older generation, their parents. And so, so many of you um, I know are, are going through this. And again, if it hasn't even been spoken about, it's something that kind of people tell me like eats away at them because they know deep down the future is gonna, gonna potentially be difficult, right? If there's been no plan and it's gonna fall on them, that's a lot of pressure. That's a big burden to, to wear. So we're gonna talk about a couple of strategies you can do in this episode to be in a better position if that is you, um, to make that burden a little bit less and to empower your parents as well. Now for the immediate question, just in terms of like immigration law, the financial system, can your immigrant parents even invest in the first place? Um, the answer is yes. So this often, uh, this question often comes up for people who have parents who are undocumented immigrants. And that's why they're asking that because they don't know if being undocumented prevents them from being able to invest in the US stock market? And the answer is yes, they can invest even if they're undocumented. The main thing people need if they're undocumented in order to invest is something called an individual tax identification number or ITIN. This is an alternative number with the federal government to a social security number for people who don't qualify for social security numbers. And it is obtained through the IRS, through the Internal Revenue Service, which is the tax agency for the US by filing a tax return and filing, um, I believe it's form W-7 to apply for the ITIN. Now, a lot of people worry like, is there gonna be an immigration problem if, if my parents or I apply for this ITIN? You know, we don't wanna share 
our information with the government. There's a lot of fear there. All that is completely understandable. Um, I know, you know, if you have been trying to protect yourself and avoid having any issues with the government to be able to stay in this country, it can seem really counterintuitive to then send all your information to the IRS to get this ITIN number. So I completely understand that. Um, however, I want to point out that the IRS is a different agency than the immigration agencies such as ICE. And there's actually privacy laws in place that forbid the IRS from sharing people's information with other, with anyone, right? Um, including ICE and immigration officials. And um, if you haven't seen it yet, check out on YouTube, you can check out um, the training we recently actually had with representatives from the IRS where they went into great detail how exactly they cannot share people's information and how they regularly um, work with ITIN holders to help them be able to pay taxes and get the benefits of an ITIN. So to learn more about that, check out um, that video or just send us a DM. If you have any, if you can't find the link, we'll send it to you, no problem at all. But yeah, so that's the immediate like question of just can your immigrant parents invest? Yes, they can if they have the ITIN number. So that's something that you can do right away if your parents don't already have an ITIN is to support them to get that ITIN number so that they are able to open an investment account and invest. And that's gonna open the doors. It's really, really life-changing when you have that ITIN number and you can actually open investment accounts, not only investing, but you can open bank accounts and credit cards. So it can, you know, if your parents aren't already participating in these systems, it can really open the doors to allow them to start, start participating in financial products and be able to build systems and accounts that are gonna allow them to save more, to invest more, so that they can be more financially prepared for the future, including for retirement, and also be building some wealth, right? So that um, they can be, again, prepared for retirement, they can enjoy life more, so that they can stop having to work so hard. I mean, there's so many people I talk to who tell me their parents are, you know, in their 60s, sometimes in their 70s, and still working in hard labor jobs like construction because they don't have any savings and they don't have any retirement plan and they don't have a choice and they have to keep working for that reason. So that's what this can look like when there is no plan. Um, and I know how much love people in this community have for family and for their parents, um, especially, I mean, I, I have seen this with many, many cultures. Um, so I, you know, I lived in Egypt, I saw it with Egyptian culture and Arab culture, how much love there is with family. Um, and then I, I've seen it so much with Ecuadorian culture, where my husband's from, where all my in-laws um, are from. And there is so much incredible um, amounts of love for family and for parents and wanting to, to give back everything that they have done for you. So one really powerful way you can give back that love they give you and have given you your whole life, um, including like, so, you know, often migrating to this country and leaving everything for the chance for you to have a better life. One way you can give back is by helping them access these financial products and accounts, including investing so that they can build a retirement plan. Now, in the US, um, because it's so expensive to retire here, it is pretty much essential for many folks to be investing in the stock market in order to have enough, enough money and resources for retirement, um, including for, for care as people get older and need more care from caretakers, right? That gets really expensive too. So it is in American families often pass down this concept that you do have to start planning for retirement at an early age to have enough funds for that. And so that's why, you know, you see American families talking to their children about investing at an early age. You know, none of this is taught in school, but those families and these and people in the middle class, right, they get this information passed on through their families. And the problem is a lot of immigrant families don't have that information getting passed down because they, you know, they aren't from here or their parents aren't from here and no one taught them. So if that, if that's you, it, it's not your fault. It's not your parents' fault. You're, it's 
not your parents' fault that they weren't able to learn about investing or teach you about investing. Um, you know, there are, I, we have many conspiracy theories about why immigrant families are not taught this information, right? And why it's so hard to access this stuff. If you're interested, we have a whole um, podcast episode I did about why did it's, I believe it's called, why do they make investing seem so complicated? Something like that. And there's, again, lots of conspiracy theories I have about that, why they try to keep out certain groups from society, in society from, um, from being able to know this information to build financial stability and wealth. But that's a whole nother conversation, not part of today's conversation. So, okay, we answered the first question of, yes, your immigrant parents can invest regardless of what their immigration status is they absolutely can invest as long as they have an ITIN number at least. If they have a social security number, of course they can use that to invest as well. Now that's just the opening the account part. Now it's, investing is so much more than that, right? Because when it, it, you're the first in your family to be doing this um, and you don't know much about it, right? It can seem really risky and really scary to be investing. Um, a lot of people, I've talked to have told me their parents feel like feel that investing is like gambling or that it's it's something extremely risky right or they there's a lot of fear that they're going to lose all of their money all of their their hard um their their money that they've worked so hard for for so many years to build now the thing is investing can be like that um I'm not going to lie to you there's plenty of people who invest in a way that is really risky and is like gambling but there's also ways to be investing that is much more conservative, um, much more sustainable, much more about building long-term build wealth instead of trying to beat the system or cheat the system, right? Um, there's, for example, things called index funds where through index funds, you can invest in many, many companies at once so that the risk is reduced because you know, if one company goes down or goes bankrupt or something, it's okay because your money's spread out in sometimes hundreds of, or thousands of companies. So um, there's ways and strategies that you can take to invest that is, um, will make it a lot less risky. And in, it gets to a certain point where when you're doing that, where it's actually more risky not to be investing because when your money is sitting in a bank account, for example, or in cash, it's losing value every day due to something called inflation. Inflation is about how the value of the dollar gets weaker and weaker over time, right? That's why if you think about, you know, if you ever watch an old movie or something or read a book from early 1900s or something, you'll, you're, you'll hear about like a candy bar, Coca-Cola or something that was like 20 cents. I mean, I'm making up a number, but something ridiculous like that, right? Um, and then now they're like $3, something like $4, right? So depending on where you live, of course. So that's because of inflation. That's because the value of the dollar decreases over time. And statistically, a dollar's value um, loses, a dollar loses value at a rate of 3% on average every year due to inflation. And actually last year it was much higher than normal. So in 2021, I believe it was about 7% was the, the rate of loss happening with the value of the dollar. So because of that, when your money is sitting in a bank account, you know, even a, a, a bank account that's getting a high amount of interest um, at like a high yield savings account, it's still going to be losing value because um, it's very rare to find a bank account that is giving you a rate of interest that's more than like 0.5, 0.6% these days. Bank accounts are just not giving the interest amounts that they used to give. So even if you're getting one of the highest interest, something like 0.5, 0.6, that's way lower still than 3%, which is the, the rate that the dollar is losing in value because of inflation. So when you just keep your money in a bank account um, or in cash, it's actually losing value um, every day due to inflation. And the only way to keep up with inflation or even beat inflation is by investing. Now there's multiple ways of investing, right? There's investing in the stock market, which I'm speaking about mostly tonight, but there's also investing in real estate, in a business, in someone else's business, in your business, in yourself, in your education. There's lots of ways you can be investing. 
But investing, whatever form it is, is the only way you can keep up with or beat inflation. So this is something wealthy people understand very well that, you know, I'm so passionate about getting out the word out in this community is you have to start having your money work for you. And you, you have to put your money in positions where your money can grow faster than the rate of inflation so that you're at least not losing money at a minimum, but also so you can be in a position to be beating inflation so that your money can grow and that's how we can start to get out of trading time for money where the only way we we can make money is by working every hour so um, unfortunately most folks i speak to um, and their parents are in positions where they're trading time for money where they only get paid by working every hour um, and by doing that it's really hard to build wealth right if you look at the wealthy people, um, very, you, you really don't see wealthy people who are working two, three jobs, 14 hours a day, only trading time for money. Like, can you think of one person, you know, who's super wealthy, who's only making their money trading time for money. Right. Um, so it, it's really hard. It's really, really difficult that way. So that's why it's so important to get in a position where your money's working for you, where you're flipping the script and your money is making money for you while you're sleeping, while you're on vacation, while you're taking time with your family, right? And this is an important point in general, but it's also, I'm saying and explaining it to help, help you all see also how investing works to be prepared for retirement. Because to have that high amount of money that your parents or you are gonna need in retirement in the US where it's very expensive to retire here, you have to put your money in a position where it's growing um, on its own so that it gets to a level where it, it could be sufficient to live on in retirement. So let's talk about helping your immigrant parents see that who may be afraid of investing, who may feel like it's super risky or like gambling. Um, now, the my, my main advice on this, honestly, that I tell um, most people that I speak to on this topic is you need to become the leader in your family on finances and share what you're learning. So I talked to a lot of people who've been trying over and over unsuccessfully to convince their parents to plan for retirement, to start budgeting, to start saving, to start investing. And it's really hard to have those conversations and, and there's conflict that can happen, right? Money is one of those things that you know, is the number one cause of divorce, for example, it, it causes a lot of conflict, a lot of emotions in it, right? So that's often doesn't work when you're just like, you need to do this, you need to do this. But what I have seen work extremely effectively for many people in this community and many of our students in our immigrant finance school program is them saying, you know what, my parents may not be engaging right now, or they may not be willing to see why this is important but I'm going to step it up and I'm going to become the leader on finances in my family. And I'm going to bring them along with me. I'm going to teach them as I learn. And I have seen this be such an effective strategy. I've seen many, many students we've worked with where in the beginning of, of, learn, of going on their financial journey and becoming um, you know, confident investors and people who are confident with managing money, they've had their parents off the beginning be resistant to that, be telling them it's like gambling, right? Like be very anti. And then they slowly will share a little bit, little by little what they're learning. And they'll start slowly showing them their investment accounts and showing them how it's growing. And then at a certain point, like the numbers don't lie, like math is math. If they can start seeing that you have this money, you put an X amount and now it's like, three times that or whatever amount it's grown, right? And you've done nothing to make it grow and you have more money just by the fact that you invested, not because you're working more, then the light bulbs go off, right? Cause then they can see it. And then they'll start being like, can you open an account for me? Can you show me how to do this? They start getting really exciting. And then the whole family starts investing and the whole family starts opening investment accounts. And it's incredibly inspiring. And I've seen this time and time again, for, for many, many people that we worked with where they have had success in getting their immigrant parents to start investing, but it all has started with them. So that is really my main advice of the number one thing you can do and what you can do today is 
to turn the focus from them back on you and decide you're going to become a confident investor. You're going to become someone who really knows how money works, who knows how to manage money, who understands the stock market, right? Who can share it with their family and become the leader. And when I tell people this, often they'll be like, they'll like laugh at me. They'll be like, what? Like, I'm, I'm going to be the leader on finances. Like, I don't even like understand, you know, like budgeting or like the most, like the first level stuff, like how am I going to be the expert on investing? And I just ask you to believe it's possible um, because so many people have done it now at this point, it, it's so possible. So 2021, we had, I can't remember the exact number. I think it was like 47 um, students in immigrant finance school who were able to open their investment accounts and open investment accounts for their family members. And they have they have proven it's true. It's it's their actions, not my words, that have proven this is possible. And if and you know if other people are doing this, um, you can do it too. It can sound like so you know unrealistic, maybe compared to what you are in now. If if you're listening and you're in this situation where like your parents don't want to talk about retirement, they don't want to talk about investing, they don't want to talk about budgeting, and you're trying to have those conversations and not going anywhere. This is possible if you make that decision to become that leader and slowly show them. And because it, a lot of it is fear, a lot of it comes down to fear. And by, by doing it yourself and showing them what's possible and sharing it with them over time, you start to normalize it. You start to take your power back and you start to empower your family because you start to put your, your family in a position where they are getting more strong than the fear. And this is ultimately um, something extremely powerful that you can do for yourself, for your parents and your family members. And you're gonna thank yourself later, let me tell you, because for many of our students, they are going to be the retirement plan for their parents. Their parents have no plan. It's going to fall on them or on their siblings or on them and their siblings. And that's a lot of financial burden to have to wear, especially if you want to have your own family. And that alone is really difficult to pull off financially. So by starting this now, you can start to make that situation in the future better. And I know you may be thinking like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Like ideally I would do that, but I like can't even handle my own expenses right now. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Like how can I you know, worry about becoming the leader in my family. I don't have time for that. And how am I going to like teach them and everyone in my family where I can like, I feel so overwhelmed just trying to forget to stop myself right now. So if that's you, um, I just reach out. I, I really encourage you. We offer free 30 minute consults to everyone in our community. I'm happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one and just give you some practical strategies to make it less overwhelming. Um, no expectations at all. This is, you know, active service we do because we care um, and we believe in this community beca to become financially powerful. And each person we do, we talk to and each family that we can impact helps us push forward that goal. Um, you may have heard us talk about our, our crazy dream is within the next five years, we want to see um, we want to see enough immigrant families investing together where they're investing um, over $1 million together. So how are we going to do that? Well, we got to help you, you all like start feeling comfortable with investing, helping your parents start investing, feeling comfortable investing. And for many folks, you know, the, the issue is actually not making the money to invest. For a lot of people we talk to, they don't have a challenge with making money. There's a lot of jobs available in this country. There's a lot of need for, for people to be helping. Um, you know, there's very, very low unemployment right now. And there's more of a, a supply of jobs than demand. There are so many people wanting to um, leave their jobs during the pandemic and everything. So because of that, like many folks, their issue is not making the money. It's how to make the money work for them. And one of the, the, I would say easiest ways you can do that is by investing in the stock market because you can do it in a way where it's very simple. 
Um, you can do it in a way where you automate it, right? We teach our students how to automate their investments so that it just happens automatically every month and they're just building wealth over time, right? Um, and that this is how you can start building passive income. Passive income is when your money starts working for you instead of you working for the money. So we want to help you all figure, help your parents learn this concept so that they're not in that construction job at age 60 or 70, like so many people's parents are that we talk to so that their money instead is working for them. Um, for one, to take their power back and, and claim their dignity and, and their rights to not have to be just sources of labor in this country working all the time, right? But also to be prepared for retirement so that they can have a, a life in the future of dignity as well and to not have to put so, so much financial strain on their children and you know for you if, if you're the child of immigrants to not have to wear all that burden by yourself right and to just have a more comfortable life so that you can focus on what really matters which is that quality time with your family not having to have money and money problems and money worries ruining that or taking over that or dominating that um, that's why this is also important. So oh, I could talk about this on it for, forever and ever. Uh, let me know what questions you have for anyone who's watching live. You can put in the comments. I really want to hear your experiences with this, um, what you're thinking, what your questions are. This is this is a really important topic, again, that a lot of people are not talking about. Um, and we we want to help you all think about and plan for the future when it comes to your finances so that you can have that quality of life that you deserve, that your parents deserve, um, you know, and be empowering yourselves and your family for the future. This is really something that you don't want to just push off and avoid because especially with investing in the stock market, the most effective way to sustainably build generational wealth through the stock market is by investing consistently over time. Because the way that money really grows through investing is by time in the market. It's not necessarily um, how much you're investing. It's really about how much time your money has to invest because of something called compound interest. Compound interest is basically when um, the interest your money makes, which is basically free money that companies give you to thank you for investing in their companies, it's when, so that's, that's money that, uh, that's how you make the passive income when you're investing. So not only do you get the, the interest in that passive income, but your interest also earns interest. That's what compound interest is. And that's how wealth is able to grow so exponentially in the stock market. Um, I've heard someone refer to it as it, it's when like basically your money's making babies, right? Cause it's, it's just growing and growing and growing. And, that's why um, the interest you can you make in a couple of years can double or triple in you know in just a few years more because it's growing at a faster and faster rate exponentially. I've got a question. Um, thank you so much for asking it, Yo Lopez eighteen. Um, so she says, "What are your thoughts on real estate investments? My parents are starting in the fifties and want to focus on real estate. Is this a good idea? I think real estate is an amazing strategy." Um, you know, if you look at wealthy people, most wealthy people are doing a combination of real estate, investing in the stock market and having their own businesses. So it's usually those three you want to be building strategies around. Um, the problem with doing just real estate uh, as a strategy, which I do see a lot in the immigrant community where people are just focusing on real estate, is that it, it just increases the risk because when your, your money is just in real estate, what happens if um, that property doesn't go up in value as expected, right? Or what happens if there's a flood or some huge damage to the roof that's gonna cost $40,000 and eat up all the profit that you could make, right? By selling the home. Or what happens if something happens to that location and the value of the property goes down because the value of that neighborhood is, is no longer valuable. Like you just never know. So it is a really good strategy. Um, you know, we actually just had an experience with real estate where we were, we were able to move to a bigger home after buying our first home by strategizing around the value of the first home growing and then selling it and using that money for a bigger home. That's something a lot of people 
do right with real estate. So it's a very effective strategy. And in some, and, and if you're lucky with the value of growing, it's just hard to predict. So for, for me with investing um, in any of these forms, it's all about spreading out your risk and doing what's called diversification, which is like not having just one strategy, just like you don't want to have all your money invested in just one company like Apple, right? Um, you want to spread it out in many companies. It's the same thing where you don't, you don't want to be just investing in the stock market or you don't want to be just doing real estate. You want to spread that out that risk. So you're investing in the stock market, you're investing in real estate, you're starting businesses. And that way, like if any one of those strategies doesn't work, it's fine because you've got other strategies going. This is ultimately what wealthy people do very well. If you, if you study wealthy people, you'll see that almost all of them have what's called multiple income streams where they're applying all these strategies to spread out their risk and have multiple sources of income and wealth building so that if one dries up or one doesn't go as expected, they're fine. Um, I hope that answers your question. So basically to sum up, yes, real estate can be a very powerful way to grow your money if it's a good investment, right? So just the fact of real estate investing doesn't mean you're going to make money it has to be a smart investment, right? Um, but also you don't want it to be your only strategy. You also want to be looking at investing in the stock market, starting businesses, um, investing in yourself, right? Great. I'm glad to answer your question. Thank you. Very great. Very good question. Um, and you know, I, again, I see it all the time and it makes sense because in a lot of other countries where folks are immigrating from, um, there is not a culture of investing in the stock market or it's not as accessible. So often the only really option for building wealth is real estate. So that's kind of a cultural thing people bring over with them and pass down and how they think about money. So for example, in Ecuador, where my husband's from and where all my in-laws are, um, it's just real estate investing pretty much, you know, with what his um, what I've seen with his family and, and their community there, people don't really invest in the stock market there. It, it's not as reliable, it's not as accessible. So it's just like land, right? Land and property. Um, and that could often be a really smart move if you're in a country that's only option. But in, the, yeah, I, hear, I see you're saying in El Salvador, it's very similar. Yeah, I know. I, I hear it all the time from people from various countries. Um, but it's in the US, it's really different because it's so common for people, particularly like in the middle and, and higher class in the US to be investing in the stock market and just have that be like, you know, part of their plan for life and for retirement. And that's just part of our system. And it's so much more accessible here that if you don't participate in it, you can really be at a disadvantage because it's just such an effective and simple way to grow your money. Again, if you're doing it in a smart, sustainable way, like it's all about your approach and strategy to investing because um, there are ways to do it where it would be super risky or not smart. So if you're, if you have questions about that, just reach out. We should, we should chat. Um, please send me a message. I'm happy to talk further with you. Yeah. Great, great question. Um, if anyone else has questions, go ahead, pop them in the chat and let's see what else can I say about this? Um, you know, okay. I'll also add to like, you may be in a position where your parents are not resistant to investing and they'd be completely open to it. They just don't know how. They don't know if they can, maybe because of their immigration status, right? So you can tell them now after this talk that they can, and then they don't know how, and they don't they don't have guidance how to do that. So we have a student who recently joined immigrant finance school in this situation where it's like her parents are down. They support her, like they get it, right? Um, they just don't have that guidance of how to do it because they're the first in their family. So that's exactly where we can help out with and come in because that's exactly what we help with is helping immigrant families become first-time investors and feel confident investing and to make sure that they know how to do it on their own, right? Instead of having to pay a financial planner to hand, handle their investments for the rest of their life, this can end up being super expensive because financial planners who manage investments, they'll charge a fee. And it can sound really small, like one, 2%, right? Something like that. But over a lifetime, it can end up being hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you're up for it, if it's possible, it's much better to learn how to invest on your own. That's what we focus on with our students, teach them how to invest on their own so that they can keep more of the, their hard-earned money 
that they're investing. Now, another challenge that comes up for many folks is if their parents are Spanish only speakers. And so they may not be able to access information and education courses about investing, which is primarily in English, right, in the US. Um, so I wanted to mention if you're in that situation, we do have a Spanish version of our signature program, Immigrant Finance School, that we would love for you to take a look at. Um, it's called Escuela de Finanzas de Inmigrantes. And it's currently available for pre-sale right now while we complete translation of it. Um, my husband, Mauricio, and some um, someone amazing on our team, Maria, have been working on very diligently on translating it now for um, over six months. And it turns out it's been uh, a lot more complicated than you would think to translate complicated financial concepts um, into Spanish. So they are, you know, well on their way, but until it's completed, we do have the program available at a lower price. If you want to get in pre-sale and the first few modules are available now, you can get started. Um, the module on how to open your investment account with an ITIN number is available. Um, we have a student who is working on that right now and getting his account open through it. So yeah, you can go ahead and check that out um, on our website. I believe it is uh, just finanzasdeimmigrantes.com. Yeah, you can check it out there if you if you have parents who are ready um, to learn about finances, but they are Spanish only speaking. That's exactly why we're creating this resource. And we love, we would love, love, love to help support them. We want to see as many immigrant families investing as possible. This is how we're going to change this country. This is we're going to how we're going to help immigrants take their power back and be able to start being in a position where they can be building generational wealth. They can have more of a say in the society. Um, they can change the laws and the immigration laws and, you know, who is considered to be a citizen and all of these things that happen when you have more resources and power. So uh, let us know if you have any questions and thank you so much for taking the time to listen. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about this really important topic and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.